Hey everyone, today we are talking about Postgres and search. At the outset, you might ask, why even use Postgres when you have dedicated search systems like Elasticsearch? Well, sometimes you might already be running Postgres, you know, as your database, but you have data which you want to search. It has scaled, but it has not scaled so much that you need a dedicated search system for this. See, running an Elasticsearch server along with your Postgres server will be very expensive, so it might not be just worth it. So learning how to build search using one of the most popular databases out there might be actually worth it. Now, instead of me preaching you some theory, let's learn from a practical search system built on Postgres by Levels.fii. If you don't know them, they are a company which tracks levels and salaries across other companies. So you can search the company name or which position you want to go for, and they will show you what salaries they can give or what salaries they will give compared to other companies. They wrote a blog about how they implemented that search on Postgres and we will be going through the ideas what they gave there and we will be learning those concepts along the way so that we can design our own search system on Postgres. All right, levels.fyi needs to do searches like this. You would search for some position at some company and it would give you curated salary details. To build a search system, we must understand how Postgres is being queried to get those results. What we will do is start with a very basic example or a very basic query that uh, levels.fii has given in their blog and stepwise move to more complex ones to more optimize the search. We will learn the concepts along the way. We can start with a query like this. Let's break this down. Suppose we want to search for JP Morgan and you have typed in JP. What we want to do here is we want to search for all the entries that starts with JP. This query is very simple. It is joining two tables that we can see here, company and city using union. And it is using the I like operator to match the company name and the city name with a search query. So it will match all the company names and all the city names that starts with JP. Keep in mind that the I like operator in Postgres uh, matches strings irrespective of their case. By the way, the, these dot dots will mean that more tables will be joined with union and everywhere we would match the column that we want to search for with the similar I like operator. To optimize this query, we need an index else it would do a sequential scan, a full scan on the table. So we can create an index on the name of the company and the name of the city and more indexes for each table that we will search on. All right, let's optimize this further with a materialized view. See, you remember that we were doing union across a lot of tables. Doing union on all these tables when the query is being fired or you are making a search, that might be very expensive. So what we can do is create a materialized view with something like this. A materialized view basically stores the result of the query that you give it and we can access that result like we access our table. This query would do the same thing as above, but we are not doing the union across all tables every time. Instead, we are selecting from the materialized view, but it does the same matching. It does the same searching. The issue now is the underlying data changes, but the materialized view still holds the same data. Like when a company is added, when a new salary is added, the data will change, right? But the materialized view will hold the same data when it was created, because at that time we ran the query to select the data from the actual tables. What can we do here? So levels.fii created an Amazon event bridge event, which will trigger our refresh materialized view, which would refresh the materialized view with the latest data. The drawback here or the trade off here is actually we will have a little bit of stale search. So this event bridge notification will run every few minutes. For those minutes, we will have a little bit of stale search. But that's okay. Like we can have a little stale search if my search is very fast. So these kinds of trade offs are very important to decide on when you are designing your own system to see what works the best for you. Well, what's the issue with the current approach? Only matching the first few characters will not be actually enough. For example, if the name is JP Morgan, if you want to search for this, even writing JP space Morgan wouldn't work because this space will cause it to fail. There might be typos as well. Even missing out on one letter won't work for this approach. We would also need some way to order these search results because currently if you are just matching, there is no way to say this search result is more relevant or this search result is more relevant. We have no way to say that. At this point, we must understand these two Postgres functions, 2TS vector and 2TS query. Let's start with 2TS vector and run this example query in Postgres. 
This would be the output. Let's take a look at the result column by column. For the first one, we have sent in the phrase or we have given the input as the phrase bat and car. And this is the output, uh, bat one and car three. You can see this is a vector or a map of the words that it has found in the phrase and it has also supplied the position with it. So the word and the position, that's what TS vector does. Now you will see that TS vector removes the words like and and is or it, it removes those words and creates a map of the words and the position. The next columns input is bats and cars. The output is still the same bat one and car three because the TS vector is trying to find the root lexeme of each and every word so that it can be matched to similar words. Then there is nation and nationality. You will see they have the same output as well because again, TS vector is trying to find a root lexeme out of the words nationality and it has found out nation. These are some company names that levels.fyi has and you can see how the TS vector is for each of them. Now that we have this map of words or their root lexemes with the position they occur in, in the search term, how would you create a query to search these maps? for each company. Here in comes TS query. We have to pass a phrase we want to search in a particular format to TS query and it would make a query to match with these TS vector. First of all, what are these colons and asterisks? The colon asterisk means that it should match any character that comes after bat. In here, it means that it matches everything that comes after bats. Now notice the results. It converts the words into its root lexemes like TS vector did. Also put these conditions like and or or. This means matching any TS vector with bat and car. Also vectors with any words that starts with bat and car. So you see that we are using the features what we had in our previous way of searching, but in here we can handle more cases better. But how do we combine them TS vector and TS query? We can use the function called TS rank where we can pass the TS vector and TS query and create a rank out of them. If it's one, then it matches fully. If it's zero, then the terms does not. So if levels.fyi executes a query like this, then they would get a result like this. You can see according to the TS rank, JP Morgan matches to the search term that we give. In this query, you will see that the results are being ordered by the TS rank. So the most relevant results will be at the top. Now you will see that the search vector or the TS vector, the result of the TS vector has been added to our materialized view, which we call as search view. So we can easily search it from there and we do not need to compute it every time. Now our current query would give us good search results and would also order them according to relevancy, but our old index won't work here. Now the search is not being done on the complete search term but it has been broken into pieces by TS vector and we are doing search on that. Here we can use something called inverted indexes. But what is an inverted index? Well, let's say you have four rows and they are marked one, two, three, four using a primary key. And this is not just for Postgres, this might be for any system, it's in general. And now we take these values and we want to invert the index. So what we do is we put these values and the index and they point to the original primary key, right? Now let's say you want to search for JP Morgan. You can take this index, go to this primary key and see what search term exists. Now what we can do is we can take each word and separate them out into separate rows of the index. So we will have something like this. So now each word points to the row it is part of. So JP says that I am part of the search term that is in primary key one. Morgan says, okay, I'm also of the search term that is in primary key one. So if you are searching for JP, it will go to primary key one and search for the relevant data in the table. This is called an inverted index. In Postgres, we can create a type of index called generalized inverted index. You can't make uh, cocktails with this GIN though. Coming back to an inverted index, this just separating out the words won't be enough since the terms that we will be searching for might not be the full words. There is a type of GIN called trigram indexing in Postgres, 
which would break down these words into groups of three letters or less. So substrings of three letters or less and built an inverted index out of it. So J will say I'm part of PK1, M will say I'm part of uh, PK1, MO will say I'm part of PK1. So let's say J would occur in multiple primary keys. So let's say one and two. So it then it would say J would belong to PK1 and two. You can create a trigram index in Postgres like this. This trigram indexing was used by levels.fii in their Postgres database. Now this is the basic search system you might start with. Now levels.fii added more layers on top of it. Like they needed to have aliases. Google can be Alphabet, Facebook can be Meta, JP Morgan can be JPMC. All these search terms might be there. So what they did, they added these alternative names in the search term that was there in the table. So the search term column will now have JP Morgan and JPMC. The other columns in the table might have the full company name, which is JP Morgan Corporation and the other details. They also put some custom logic on top of its TS rank. So it would calculate the ranking according to that logic. So they can give their users more relevancy of the searches. So if someone types GOO, it would probably mean Google and not any other companies because Google is the most popular one. So the most popular one would be shown at the top. So they took many factors like the number of clicks on a search result to give its relevancy. You might also need to build something to make the search more suited to your parameters, your metrics. They also made the search term in the database rows contain more information like the positions or the titles. For example, Coinbase X product manager is an entry in the database that can be searched for. So the users can search for product manager at Coinbase and can get that result back. All right, this was all about levels.fii's way of building search on Postgres. Hope you learned something from it about building search systems on top of Postgres. Let me know if you want more videos on how to design and build search systems. Read the whole blog that levels.fii gave out. I will put the link in the description and I will see you in the next one.